Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Two mothers. It's still raging a lot, breaking things. Both raising violent kids. This is a dangerous situation. But how they take Dr. Phil's advice... This has given us hope that we didn't think we would ever have. ...couldn't be more different. You've got to do more. I feel like a failure enough without being criticized even more. I don't think you've been consistent. I'm a good parent. I don't think anything I'm going to do is make you happy. Remember this 12-year-old boy? His parents had to make a tough decision, send him away or risk losing all of their kids to Child Protective Services. You'll see their unbelievable update later. But first, I want you to watch this home video of a mother as her son is attacking her as she calls a psychiatric hospital and the police for help with her eight-year-old son. Go upstairs to your room for your 10 minutes. Reese, upstairs. No, don't call the police. No, I'm calling the hospital. No, please. Stop. No. Stop. 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 He's going to have to come back. He's beating the shit out of me again. I'm sorry. Derek and Talina say their eight-year-old son punches, bites, spits on them, and threatens to kill them while they're sleeping. No. <laughs> Stop it! Enough! Ah, loser! Reese, whether you lock the door or not, the police are still gonna come in. My eight-year-old son, Reese, is just very, very violent. He flies into these blind rages. No! He directs all of this rage at me beats her whenever he gets the chance. Tries to hit her, spit on her, kick her, bite her, swears at her. It's heart-wrenching to watch. He'll taste my blood in his mouth and still spit on me afterwards. Kick you all day? He takes pleasure in hitting my wife. He enjoys it. You can see it. He's smiling the entire time. And he'll taunt me. You're going to cry. You're going to cry. I'm not going to stop until you cry. You know, you're a crybaby. Then what are you going to do? Cry all over me? His voice just takes on such a different tone. It's a chance to make your life so miserable! So distorted, it's just, it's full of loathing and disgust. Don't you dare! Or you'll be sorry! I'm kill you, idiot! Almost evil. Stop! He's looked right at me one day and told me that when I'm not looking, he's gonna take a sharp knife and stab me in the heart to kill me. These outbursts, they can last as long as two or three hours. Reese, I'm not letting go. You're gonna get hurt. <laughs> We've had to physically restrain him in excess of an hour. <laughs> He's kicked holes in the wall. He's ripped a door right off the frame. Just blew my mind. He has put a plastic bag over his sister's head and told her she was never gonna see mom and dad again. At school, he stabbed one student with a pencil and he actually tried to choke out another little girl. I mean, I'm terrified of what's gonna happen if he continues this as he gets bigger. You will pay! Tell me where you think this is headed. Thank you. If something doesn't change, he's gonna end up in the criminal system. He's gonna, he's gonna hurt somebody in a way that he'll never be able to take back. And I'm going to lose my son if, if something doesn't change. As far as losing him in the criminal system, he was forensically diagnosed for his criminality potential, and they did deem him quite high, um, at a high risk. So, obviously, with him getting older, he's just getting stronger. His outbursts are getting more violent. Uh, we don't want that to... We don't want it to graduate as far as him using, you know, getting weapons, getting knives. You know, right. he's using his fists and his feet and he's spitting. But we don't want that to get to another level beyond, you know, what it is now. Do you fear that he can hurt you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Has he hurt you? He has. I mean, I've taken <clears throat> many punches to the face. I mean, he's punched me in the stomach and dropped me to the ground in one shot at the age of six. I mean, he's got muscles that he should not have for an eight-year-old. I mean, he's, he's a powerhouse. And as it stands now, I'm finding it extremely difficult to restrain him on my own. 
so when I am doing it on my own, it's the likelihood of me getting seriously hurt is getting is increasing. Tell me why y'all wanted to be here, why you wanted to talk about this with me. We've seen so many different doctors and professionals over the last five or six years. Nobody has been able or willing to address the behaviors. They've only medicated him repeatedly and the medication's not doing it. We are at a point now where we've had social workers as well as new doctors tell us that there's a good chance that we might have to voluntarily just turn him over to children's aid because the likelihood of us being able to manage him from our own home is going to be impossible. That's the word they used, impossible. And I don't want to do that. I don't feel like we've exhausted everything yet. And we know that nobody else is going to fight for him the way that we are trying to now. I mean, putting him into the, for children's aid, we don't know if they're going to do as much as, you know, we're trying right now. You guys know, because you've, you've seen the show and, and we've talked to you, that we want to do everything we can to help you in your situation, but you're also teaching tools. Absolutely. Because there are, there are parents around the world, not just in the United States and Canada, but this show is on around the world, that are in situations with what they consider to be an out-of-control child, and, and they don't know what to do. And, and frankly, what you get most when you reach out is people throw pills at it. Well, let's sedate them, essentially. Let's put them in a chemical straitjacket, and so they become less inconvenient for us. But it doesn't really address what's, what's going on. And sometimes the resources are not great for that. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to try to figure it out. Here's more of eight-year-old Reese's behavior. Now, he has stabbed a teddy bear with a kitchen knife. Yes. Uh, he gave the cat a haircut and cut off an ear. Almost, uh, almost severed it, just, yeah. just practically almost. severed yes. uh, an ear. Uh, choked and stabbed a, a, a schoolmate with a pencil. Uh, ripped the door off the frame, kicks holes in the walls, destroyed the metal frame glasses with bare hands. Mm -hmm. He calls you a bitch, a whore, a, a bastard. I'm going to make your life miserable. And, and he says this in a, in, in a voice that is, the tone is very disturbing yes. to you as, as well as the words. It's called the teacher bastard put lips on a hot stove, mm -hmm. tells you, thank you for being my target practice. Tells mom, I've told everyone when I don't get my own way, I hurt people. So this is a, this is a power situation. This is something where he is, he is wielding power that he doesn't know how to handle or he doesn't know how to manage. Right. Is he affectionate with you? He is, but I don't actually know whether to believe it or not. Because right. he can give me a hug and a kiss and say I love you, but the, it never quite reaches his eyes, ever. It's and a, two minutes later, he can just lose it and go on the attack. So when he tells us that he loves us, when he gives us hugs, we don't know if it's genuine or I don't. And it kills me as a father to, to doubt my own kid's affection. You know, him giving me a hug and telling me he loves me, and I'm wondering, is that, is that real? I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, this is a dangerous situation. I don't think you're overreacting to it. I think he could hurt you. I think he could hurt you. I think he could hurt his sister. Mm -hmm. I think he could hurt himself. Mm -hmm. And if he does that, then he's going to be held to account. And so that could take a lot of options away from you if, if something happens and he gets in trouble with the law now the state, the government, starts making decisions about your son instead of you. Mm -hmm. So we've got to stop things before it gets to that point. Now, Talena and Derek are in need of serious intervention. Now, one of the country's leading parenting experts is going to join the conversation right after this. a lot of professionals. The only option that they could suggest us is to relinquish custody of them to Children's Aid. And they said, you know, you giving up your kid, we won't think ill of you. I'm like, I don't care what you think. This is my kid. This is our son. We're fighting for him. And I know damn well that they're not going to be doing the same for him. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil.
Is her ex using their sons? Do you give your child support checks to the boys? To punish her? I want to be able to pay the bills. At some point, it's got to stop being my fault. She can't afford her life. Plus, a custody battle turns ugly. He took showers with her more than once. Her accusations are insane. When they discover their daughter's notes in a box. i got to tell you, these left me very disturbed. That's tomorrow. When he was a little bit younger, we had a lot of problems with him prowling at night. He would wake up while we were sleeping and take full run of the house. It was during one particularly rough evening. He attempted to get the cat a haircut. He actually severed half the cat's ear. We woke up in the morning and there was cat hair all over the living room and blood spray up the wall two feet. It was absolutely horrific to wake up to. Well, Derek and Talina are at the end of their rope because of the violent outburst by their eight-year-old son. Now, joining us now is Dr. Alan Kasdan, professor of psychology and child psychiatry at Yale University and the director of Yale's Parenting Center and Child Conduct Clinic. Now, he is the former president of the American Psychological Association and is a member of the Dr. Phil Show Advisory Board. He's also the author of The Kasdan Method, for parenting the defiant child. So, Dr. Kasdan, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, Dr. Kasdan, let me get your general impressions of this situation. Well, I, as you had said, the, clearly it's a dangerous situation. Clearly, um, there are a lot of people at risk here. And normally this would have been a case for hospitalization just to try to uh, protect everybody. And something like that really is needed now. Um, it turns out the work I've been doing and other people have actually specialized in these children. And so, briefly, there's, there's considerable hope here. There's still some things that can be done. This is Dr. Frank Lawless, by the way. He's chairman of the advisory board. Uh, he, has, he has written extensively on autism. Uh, he's, he's dealt a lot with child developmental issues, particularly from a neurological standpoint. Dr. Lawless, thank you for being here. We'll be thank you, Dr. Lawless. One of the things that we noticed in the video are the efforts to restrain mm -hmm. the child. And let's take a look at how these parents respond to Reese after an attempt to get him into timeout. Okay, let me take his arms, Derek. Take them. Ow! Ow! Take them. Take Break your arm race. Ah! Dr. Kazan, let's talk about these efforts to restrain. Uh, what's your opinion here? Is this helping or hurting? Here's what we know. Uh, restraint will increase aggression. Yep. It'll not help the child change in any short or long-term way. Nope. And your chance of getting really hurt on the spot is, uh, is much greater than it would be if you didn't restrain. We can recognize that we've been utilizing short-term solutions that are going to have long-term consequences because nobody's taught us the long-term Look, We don't solutions. expect to, you we know, when we see these... I don't these, know what else to do. When we see these professionals, we don't expect him... We don't hand him over, fix my kid, get him back, it's great. We, we just need the tools, and that's all we're looking for. We need to know... Don't, we don't know what else to do. We don't know what else to do. What should they do when he goes into these rages, when he is attacking, when he's tearing something up, when he's out of control. If there's any possible way to stay away, if you can leave the room, better. If you're worried about damage, just stay around and don't make eye contact. But that's all you can do then. The real treatment comes at the other times, those calm times. You can't do much right there. You are in over your head as parents. At this stage of the game, it, it is simply, in my opinion, and I think you concur, this, the danger in this situation is such that, that this child needs some type of care that you cannot give him at home. Dr. Lawless, do you agree that this child needs to be handled, managed outside the home? Well, I think it needs to be, he needs to be managed both outside as well as within the home because if he gets managed outside the home and comes back, 
you're going to still have the same problem. Uh, I think the point is that if he does get placed somewhere for some type of intervention, you guys are going to have to work as hard as he is working because you've got to change the way that you approach. Is this child uh, on the continuum of autism? The, the parts that we read, I would say yes, he's got some of the key symptoms. On the good side, he has a number of things that aren't that far. And so that is something to work on, though, something to be sensitive to. Just clearly, the violence is the top priority. We'll be right back. Dr. Frank Lawless, who, as I said, is the president of the Dr. Phil Advisory Board, is the author of The Autism Answer, and you agree that there are autistic characteristics here that need to be dealt with? Uh, definitely. For example, uh, he really doesn't comprehend everything you're talking to him because he's got sensory problems in terms of interpreting that in his own brain. He's also got serious, as we know, inhibition problems in terms of his anxiety. And this is the biggest issue that you're dealing with, is how to manage his outrage and his, and his uh, stress. We have asked Dr. Kasdan uh, if he would agree to intervene with y'all and get involved with, with you as parents and, and with Reese as a child to get a grip on this and see if, if we can turn this around. And he has graciously uh, agreed to do that, to accept y'all at the clinic and and do that work and so we will get you there would you like to do that oh, oh yes absolutely like yeah i don't yeah. want to turn him over to children's aid yeah no we don't want to do that because there's we don't want to do that no. let's just say we we don't want to do that i don't want him there i want to introduce anthony haskins anthony haskins is our resource director and also want to introduce patty evans Patty, would you stand up uh, Patty is with the Aspen Education Group, and unfortunately, as wonderful as uh, the Aspen Group is, and uh, their, their SUS program and, and Copper Canyon and other programs, uh, your child is too young for that. Uh, but I'm going to ask Anthony and, and Patty to get together and see what we can do to find out if there is a placement that we can work towards. Uh, for someone that is that is eight years old. Can you help with that? I know y'all don't do that in your program, but can you work with Anthony to help bring this about? Yes, we'd like to work with him. Um, eight years old is young, so um, worked with Anthony a lot. We're going to have to do some sourcing, but certainly we'll commit to that, and hopefully we can come up with a good solution. All right, and Anthony, you're already on the trail of, of, of trying to identify some resources for this, correct? Correct, yeah, we've been working on this, and we're not going to stop until we find some answers on this. Yeah. We've also asked Dr. Lawless with the PNP Center uh, in Dallas to, to help us in working directly with Reese uh, on some things that we're just going to kind of fold everything in together here. So we're going to try to bring every resource to bear uh, that we can because it's this is something that there are options for and uh, does this get better can Reese have a life integrated within this family and, and be peaceful and happy we have found it in about 78 80 percent of the time yes but uh, so so if there's great hope for us not every time but a lot of the time yeah, and this is going to be a lot of work on y'all's part. As you say, Derek, you said we're not just bringing the child, say, fix yeah. him. Right. You get that you've got to change what you're doing. We acknowledge that. Like, Okay. Uh, we've been asking for somebody to teach us what to do for six years. Yeah. Well, that's going to get started right away. Now, one last thing, and I'm a, a, a well-known animal advocate. You've got to protect these animals in the home. Yes. You, you, you can't allow a child to terrorize or, or torture an animal. It, it's your duty to protect that animal. It means finding them another home, getting them out of the home, whatever it has to do. You got to protect the animals in this yeah. situation too, okay? Absolutely. All right, so we got a plan. We're going to move yes, forward with this. Thank you. All right, how do you feel about this? This has given us hope that we didn't think we would ever have. I can't, I can't express my appreciation enough. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Next, it's been four months since we met this family torn apart by their son's violent rages. Now they say his outbursts have gotten worse, and if anything doesn't change soon, they're definitely headed for divorce. Dr. 
still raging a lot, breaking things, severe rage. Zachary heard voices telling him to do stuff. Ron and I argue almost daily. I am working harder at trying to figure out what's wrong. And later... Nathaniel will physically hurt us or one of the family every day. I've always felt if I just studied more about what was going on with him or found the right doctors at the right time, maybe I could have prevented this. Prompting is what someone does before behavior to get behavior. It replaces nagging, it replaces screaming at a child, finger pointing at a child. All those things are known to make the child a little bit worse. Gavin, please put your toys in the toy box. The praise, the statement, the enthusiasm say exactly what it was that you're praising. Oh my gosh, that's great! You put your toys in the toy box, first time out. And third, some physical touch. That's excellent. Putting these three things together, it'll make an enormous difference in your child. When Ron and Christine appeared on our show, they were desperate for help with their 10-year-old son, Zachary. He punched, kicked, screamed, hit walls, and tackled them. And he was taking out his anger on the family cat. You'll remember this video. My nine-year-old son, Zachary, gets violent. And he rages. hit me several times in the arms, the face. One time he backhanded me in my jaw. He kicks, breaks things, thrashes. It's like watching someone having a seizure. Can you imagine how he must be feeling inside? It's like, it's gonna be warm. Your marriage is in trouble over this. It's been in trouble. We've grown apart, big time. Do you really think that she's to blame for this? Some of the parenting tools she uses adds to a lot of his behavioral issues. And you've been leaning on your own understanding in this, and how's that working for you? The extent of the rages, I don't think is normal. You're what I call a yeah, but person. Yeah, but we tried that. Yeah, but we did that. Yeah, but he follows us. Yeah, but we're in the car. But we're going to make some new choices now. And if you're inconsistent, it's going to really make it worse. I am going to send Zachary to the PNP Center for a thorough diagnostic test. Well, it's been four months since we've seen Christine and Ron. Now, during that time, uh, they have taken Zachary to Dr. Kazdin's clinic at Yale University and Dr. Lawless PMP Center for medical and psychological assessments. But they say that Zachary is still raging, and now they fear he's got a new problem. Take a look. The situation with Zachary now really hasn't changed much since we saw Dr. Phil. He's still raging a lot, breaking things, just the usual severe rage. I feel like some of the techniques that we've learned from Dr. Kasdan may be a little too young for Zachary's age. I feel that they're more geared towards toddler and youngsters. When Zachary has refused and been so defiant and rebellious against wanting to try it, we've pretty much given up. Zachary heard voices one time in this past week. It was after he had a severe raging fit late at night. They're telling him to do stuff and he just started saying, stop, stop it. I looked at him and I said, what do you want me to stop? It's not you. It's voices in my head. They won't stop. They won't go away. It's definitely disturbing to hear that from your son. Our marriage, it's a blame game. Ron and I argue almost daily. It's become a constant nagging, arguing. I am working harder at trying to figure out what's wrong. I hope we're not at the end of our rope. I'm not sure how much longer I can stay in a marriage that doesn't have commitment on both sides as far as trying to help our child. Do y'all feel like you have made every effort, been consistent, worked together as a team, done everything that we have said needed to take place in order for this to improve? At first we were trying very hard together consistently, um, trying to present the parenting techniques that Molly and Dr. Kasdan have showed us. He just says, stop, I don't want to listen, and blah, 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 blah. He covers his ears, and he, he just is so defiant, he does not want to listen. Have you been consistent? Um, not recently. We were at first, and we've almost given up because our consistency Look, wasn't paying off. Okay. I assume what you want is my honest opinion of what's of what's going on here, right? 
because we've talked to both of you independently. Yeah. And both of you point fingers at the other one, saying that you have not committed to a program of intervention. You, you have said straight up that you blame Ron for not trying Dr. Kasten's techniques. You say, we're doing the best we can, but he doesn't seem to be involved in this. He doesn't seem to be committed to it. Uh, you say the same thing. We're so, we're, we're so much at each other, and there's so much problem and strife between the two of you that it's hard to focus on, on what's going on. And I, I can, you know, th there's an old adage, a poor workman quarrels with his tools. And I, I, I really question whether or not you're looking for a quick fix and wanting this to turn around like that, or you're willing to get in there and not do it for a week, not do it for a month, but do it until it turns around. And according to the two of you, that's not happening. Have you two consistently participated in the web sessions with Dr. Kasdan and his staff? We've only had one web session with Molly. What do they need to do that they're not doing? Well, if you're still game, of course we are, which would be every week a web session. Anytime you're in a crisis, give us a call and we'll change things to help you on the spot in addition. But the regular weekly web sessions or automatic for a given would, would really be important. Are you writing this off? No, I wouldn't say I'm writing it off. I've just... <sighs> I feel that we've done a lot and I just don't feel that um, we've seen a lot of response. And I know it's only been four months. Maybe this is too early. But don't you need more contact? Don't you need more help? The first time we talked, I, I accused you of being a yeah, but person, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. Where I said, it's just no matter what we say, you say, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. That was before we ever started, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're here saying, yeah, we did that, but it's too infantile for him. Yeah, we did that, but we, we, we haven't, we went up there, but we've traded emails and it hasn't worked and we've done this and that. If you have a better option, then you need to take it. But what I've done is I've brought you Dr. Lawless from the PMP Center, Dr. Alan Kasdan from, from the Yale Center. They, you aren't going to find better experts on the globe to help you and coach you through this. This man is saying, call me in a crisis. Let's plug in on the, on the weekly web sessions. And that's not happening. And you're saying, we're not getting the results that we want. And I'm saying, you've got to do more if you want it to change. Now, if you have some quicker re resolution, if you, if you have some better treatment, then take it and teach me about it because I'll then get rid of these smucks <laughs> and tell my guest what you have figured out. I'm gonna take a break and we're gonna talk about what's happening with Zachary. And then we're gonna find out if Dr. Kasdan's method worked on a 12-year-old boy uh, that I think was at least as radical as this situation. Uh, this is something I want Ron and Christine to see next. Now, there was another child that we talked about on the last show. Uh, Carolyn and Scott say that they were living in constant fear of their 12-year-old son, Nathaniel. And they almost lost all of their children to Child Protective Services. Take a look at where their family was four months ago. Our life is in extreme chaos. Yeah! And Nathaniel will physically hurt us or one of the family every day. Yeah! Nathaniel's had moments with knives. He gets jammed it in a couple times like that. He gets so violent, you cannot reason with him. And I just put him right out here in the front yard until he calms down. I've always felt if I just studied more about what was going on with him or found the right doctor at the right time, maybe I could have prevented this. How do you feel watching that? It tears me up inside. I never dreamed of protecting my family from my own son. I think we've gotten to a meltdown point. Uh, he's picking up weapons. I think you need to take this young man out of the home. If you don't, somebody's going to get hurt. Let me 
be just brutally honest with you here? I'm really recommending that we send him away so we have a chance to woodshed the two of you because he may be the best adjusted in this situation right now. He does well at school. He does well with friends. He just can't get along with you guys. Well, that was some of the most dramatic video that we have ever had to look at on this show. Well, it's been four months, and what's happened with his family since then uh, may surprise you. Being on the Dr. Phil show was amazing. The staff was fabulous. Dr. Phil really cares, and we have really gotten the help that we really needed. Nathaniel left the next day and went to wilderness camp. While he was doing that, we were working with the Yale Parenting Center on how to parent him. Let's start by talking about prompting. Name one component of an effective prompt. You have to tell them what you want them to do. What would you want to say? Can you please go to your room and put your dirty clothes in the hamper? Exactly. Let's move on to praise. So praise is a really effective way to change behavior. Do either of you remember one component of effective praise? Tell them what they did right. Tell them specifically what they did right, exactly. What else? Make sure there's touch. Your touch as parents is really reinforcing. And your tone of voice, remember, should be excited, enthusiastic. Right. Nathaniel still has anxiety, but now he knows how to handle it, and we know how to help him get through it. OK, Scott's turn. Prompt Carolyn as if she's Nathaniel. Nathaniel, it's time for you to take your medicine. OK. OK, nice statement. Nice and calm and specific. Good. Good job. Thank you very much. Yay! Nice. Excellent. Well, you guys. You know, you've both done such a wonderful job so far. You're being really, really consistent. We're really trying. <laughs> you are both the reason why you're seeing so many changes in his behavior. Dr. Phil, thank you for the honesty. I desperately needed somebody to look me in the eye and say, this is what you need to do. I thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. Okay, so certainly some progress there. Uh, I'm glad to see y'all. I'm glad to see you on... on uh, uh, on a happier note. I am too. <laughs> um, now, this is an ongoing process, correct? I mean, yes. you don't think that this is all done, no. that you no. guys are done, or that no. Nathaniel's done. Tell no. me where you do think things are. Well, I think we're in a place right now where we have the tools and the skills that we've needed and um, that we hadn't learned before, and we're on the road to learning, but we're really in a good place where we can do fun things as a family again. Yeah, because you say you've got the family back now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You're able to have meals together. Meals, to Monopoly you. night. I mean, yeah, we're back. <laughs> Dr. Kazan, this is when you can really make some headway now because you're out of crisis and he is listening and he is responding. That's when you can really make some hay with this family dynamic, true? Yes, yes. And what will, what will the future hold? What, what will happen at this point? So, so we feel that, uh, that they've worked so hard and that they're first degree black belts. <laughs> but there's a long way to go for a first degree black belt, as we all agree. And there's much more that can be done. And uh, we're on the road to doing it. And I think you're seeing progress. Yes, yes we are. Uh, the violent acts, the serious violent acts, I believe, are gone. They are gone. And that's what I want you all to understand. Uh, and, and realize these situations can and do get better. And, and that's important. And I, and I want you guys to not quit on this process. We'll be right back. What's it going to take for Christine and Ron to get on the same page when it comes to disciplining their son? I mean, that's the big question, right? Yes, but I, I don't want to be made to look like we're not trying, because we are trying. I feel like a failure enough without being criticized even more. And I wasn't going to do this show if we were going to be thrown under the bus. I work long hours. Molly, being back east, can only do morning web sessions. Zachary's got such bad anxiety, he's missed so much school that we've been reported to the school district because he won't. I can't get him up to go to school or he's late because he is so anxious. He's almost having panic attacks and he has been for years since he was two. It's just escalated. We've been trying. 
We're trying the best we know how. That's why we're back here to get help, to get further help and guide us more. We need guidance. We know this will work. I just don't want to look like I'm, we're not doing what we're supposed to. Okay, well, okay, and I'm sorry. I, I, I don't want you to feel that you're being mischaracterized in any way. But I'm not really concerned about how you look. I'm concerned about your son. I'm concerned yes. about what it takes for your son to get to a better place. Tell me what you want me to say to you. Tell me what you want to focus on. And I want to we'll focus, focus more on the parenting skills. It seems like he's not at a place where he's receptive enough to keep working and listening to our efforts to institute the Kasdan method. And so I feel at a loss. I don't have the answer. I don't know what to do. I don't care how I look, but I do care how I am perceived as a parent. I'm a good parent. My husband's a good parent. We may not be perfect, but we are good parents, and we are trying the best we know how and what we know how. And it took a lot of courage to come on this show again to do a follow-up. Listen, I'm not going to chase you down the street with what I think are the best resources in the world and then have you tell me you don't like the way I'm presenting them to you. Uh, that this doesn't have to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't have to bring you what I think are wonderful resources that people are lined up miles around the block hoping that they get and you tell me you don't like the way they're being presented. And I I'm telling you the truth. I don't think you've been consistent. I think the two of you have been on different pages about this. I don't think you've been consistent in applying the methods. I don't think you've reached out to adjust the program. I think you can do better. And when you do, I think you'll get better results. Now, that's the truth of it. That's my opinion. And I'm entitled to my opinion. And I think you know it's correct. Uh, I don't know. I'm concerned that your son heard a voice in his head. If that's what happened, that may mean that there is psychosis involved. Uh, I have Patty here because we were prepared to offer you a placement for your son uh, in the Seuss program, which I think can be terrific. But I got a real problem with that at this point because I don't think anything I'm going to do is make you happy. I think whatever I'm going to do, you're going to find fault with it. Uh, and you know, it's not my child, and I feel like I'm working as hard to get this child in a better place. Uh, than anybody. I don't and mean to come across that way. I'm sorry? I don't mean to come across that way. Well, would you like me to play back what you've been saying? No. You know, I'm a fairly good listener, and you don't like the way I'm characterizing you. I don't think you're doing everything you need to do, and based on results, that's the case. <laughs> Tell me what you would like to do. Whatever you suggest. I'm so thankful to you, you don't realize. I may not come across that way, but I've gotten so depressed because of all this, and I think that's what's coming out. I've almost lost my job because of this. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm just under so much stress, I think it's just coming out in the wrong way. And my attitude is that I'll do whatever I can for people that want the help. And if, and if you want the help, then we'll do that. But we got to work. I, I'll work with you. I'm not going to work at odds with you. I don't and, want that. And, you know, you talk like you're doing us a favor by being back for this show. I, I, I ask you to come back here for one reason. That's that I'm concerned about your son. As we are, too. And I, I, I think that we should give that some thought. We'll be right back. Well, are you now saying that my staff set you up? No, I'm no. not saying that. I'm just saying some... I have been so appreciative. I've sent thank you letters. And we are still so grateful for all your help and all the... We feel blessed to have been called here. Even though I think my... I'm just depressed and I'm frustrated. Okay, well, let me ask you something. And you, I'm not the best articulate but you've person. But be, you've got to be responsible for what you say. Because you come on here with a pissy attitude and sit here on national television and tell me I didn't want to come back here because I was going to get thrown under the bus. Are you kidding me? Is that how I said it? Would you like to see it? I'll, I'll be damned I'm going to chase somebody down the street with the best resources in the world. Yeah, I... that's not what I meant. It's not what I wanted to have come across. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just, let's mm -hmm. just start over. 
How's that? Let's just, that sounds good. Let's just start over, all right? I am let's so just, depressed. Let's I don't just know what to, to get along do. And start over. How's that? Okay, well, we continued talking during the break, and as I said, this jersey may not look like it, but I'm on your team, right? And I, I want to know straight up, do, do y'all want to help? Yes. Yes, uh, more than anything. I, for sure. I know there's no quick fix. So we're on the same team? <laughs> we could be friends? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm strong-willed, and I'm, sometimes things don't come out correctly. Yeah, but... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dr. Lawless, thank you and the PMP Center for everything, and a special thanks to Dr. Alan Caston. His clinic is the Yale Parenting Center and Children Conduct Clinic. It's one of the top facilities in the country for violent children. Now, here's the thing that I want all of you at home to know. You don't have to travel to Yale. You don't have to physically go to the clinic in order to get help if you have an out-of-control child. You can go online for face-to-face, -face, live, web-based treatment and specific parenting techniques. Just go to yale.edu slash yaleparentingcenter.com and sign up for classes. Uh, thanks to Patty Evans from the Ask an Education Group and the uh, SUS Youth Wilderness Program as well. Now, we have links to all of these resources on drphil.com, so... Uh, go there, click, and thanks for your time and attention. Appreciate it.